let y'all let you all preach this morning. Yeah, y'all feel like preaching? I'm gonna let y'all preach this morning. Yeah, I'm just gonna listen to listen to all of them sit and look at you all like you're not gonna look at me. I want y'all to preach. <laughs> Amen. If you got it, say I got it. Michael say. <laughs> Amen. All right. You may begin reading at the 38th verse of the 10th chapter of St. Luke. came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house right. and she and her sister called Mary which were which also sat at Jesus feet heard his words but Martha was concerned about my servant came to him and said, Lord, do thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she may help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Now that's, just think about yourself. You think about many things. But do you think about the need for things? You think about many things. You're careful about many things. But what about the need for things? I'm trying to get somewhere now, y'all. What, what, what about the need for You want to do this, you want to do that, but what about the need of things? Jesus asked and said unto her, Martha, Martha, he's trying to calm her down. Martha, Martha. I know what you're doing. You're careful and you're troubled about a whole lot of things that really is not necessary. But one thing is needful. And most of y'all are overlooking the needful thing. Brother Kendall, I'm going to look at you and call your name. Brother Kendall. Think about the need for things, Brother Kendall. Hello, somebody. You, do you get me? All right, now, this is, this is for your heart, so. I'm going to go over it again. And Jesus said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen the good part. <laughs> well, you're doing all these other things. Mary done made choice of the, of the good part. Which shall not be taken away from her. And I, I think I just used for a subject, choosing what is better. Many times in our lives that we are like Martha. We are concerned about a whole lot of things that really could be put on hold. Hello, somebody. Could be put on hold, but now Mary and Martha and also her brother, Lazarus, they were dear friends of Jesus. 
You notice on more than one occasion, uh, while going to Jerusalem or uh, leaving Jerusalem, he always stopped by their house. And he, he felt welcome there. I wonder how many homes here that represented here that Jesus feel welcome in going into your home. Or do you put a lock on your door where he can't, he get, he can't get in? Jesus felt at home at Mary and Martha's home. Uh, yeah, uh, they made him welcome. He, they were his friends. They were friends of Jesus. How many of you are friends of Jesus? Now, now, really, think about it. Now, when you answer these questions that I ask you, you if you know you're not a, his friend, you, you, you better be careful. They were friends of Jesus. They, uh, uh, they love Jesus, and Jesus loved them. Why you say that? Because the Bible speaks of it. You know, he always stopped in their home. And they made him welcome. He and his disciples. He, Jesus didn't travel alone. He always had someone with him. He had his, his apostle with him. So to receive Jesus, they had to also receive his apostle. To make preparation for Jesus, they had to also make preparation for his apostle. They were friends of Jesus. And Jesus felt at home with Mary and Martha. And on this occasion, Jesus, just prior to uh, entering into uh, this village, uh, Jesus, uh, on his way down from Jericho, he, it means he, he was on his way. Uh, maybe perhaps to Jerusalem, and um, and that was a rich man that had approached him, and uh, a rich lawyer, the Bible says, a certain lawyer, had approached him, and stood up to tempt him, and said uh, unto him, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? How many of y'all want eternal life? How many of y'all want eternal life? Now you can raise your hand on that if you want it. If you, if you don't want it, just keep your hand down. He, 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 the Bible says he asked Jesus this question not because he was really concerned, but to tempt him. You follow me? And Jesus said unto him, what is written, how, how you read it? You know, what is written in the law? And he answered and said, thou should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all that soul, and with all that strength, and with all that mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou have answered right. Do this, and thou shalt live. Jesus said, Now you have the right question. Do this, and you'll live. live. But he willingly to justify himself. Now, a lot of times people ask you a question, but they want all, you give, give them an answer, but they want to justify themselves by making another statement. I'll ask another question. Y'all, you, you follow me? Yeah. Uh, the Bible says he was willing to justify himself, and he's going to still try and entrap Jesus. He said uh, unto Jesus, who is my neighbor? Yeah. Yeah. Now, he, uh, Jesus already gave me, and, and, he, and, he, and he gave Jesus the right answer back. He quoted the, the scripture, and Jesus said, you answer right. If you do this, you live. Then he wasn't satisfied. Just like most of us. Come on, y'all help me now. Don't just sit up there and look at me. Talk back to me. Uh, he wasn't satisfied with the answer that Jesus gave him because he really wasn't sincere with the question that he had first asked Jesus. And uh, the Bible said that, uh, and he said, Thou hast answered right. And he willing to justify himself, he said, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, Jesus had to give him a parable. He said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And on the way down from Jerusalem to Jericho, he fell among thieves. Somebody want to rob him. Hello, somebody. Not want to rob him, they robbed him. Beat him up. 
Left him half dead. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> Left him half dead. But some religious folk passed by. <laughs> I ain't say Christian now. Some religious folk passed by. Anybody can be religious and not know God. The Bible says, and by chance that came down in certain priests. He came that way. And when he saw him, he saw the man wounded. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. You, you know, sometimes we see people in need. Because uh, they might, they want me to help them. <laughs> so you go another way. How many of y'all know I need your help? And y'all just passing by on the other side. Y'all passing by on the other side. No, I need your help to pass on by the other side. All right. <laughs> and they ain't going to tell me sometimes, Pastor, I want, we, I want to help you. How, how, help me how? <laughs> Come on, y'all help me. <laughs> Here was a priest who performed priestly duties in the, sanctu in, in the sanctuary, in, 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 in the tabernacle. But when he saw the man wounded, he passed by on the other side. Then the Bible says, not only did the priest pass by on the other side, but there came a Levite. He was also of the priestly tribe. And when he saw, and when he was, uh, uh, when, uh, and, and when he was at the place, he, ca he came and he went a little closer, y'all. And looked on him. And I think that's what I'm reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he came, came and looked on him. Ain't that a shame? See someone needing help and look at them and know they need help. And then, then, then walk away. That's a shame. That's a shame before God. He looked on him. He passed it by the priest went that way. I'm going to go this way. <laughs> but conjunction, something else happened. A certain Samaritan, one that the Jews didn't have no dealing with. Samaritan, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, not only having compassion, but he went to him. Some people, Pastor, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, but it won't help me. <laughs> I'm praying for you. I have so many people. Pastor, I'm praying for you. <laughs> hey, but I need more than your prayer, brother. You know, I thought about, I thought about a little story, I don't know, you know. <laughs> it, it, it said, um, a guy, he was talking, but he met a bear. And uh, two, two fellas met a bear. And, uh, and they said, uh, the other guy said, let's pray. He said, wait a minute, brother. <laughs> Prayer's all right in prayer me, but. <laughs> He ain't waste nothing about me. <laughs> See, when you're proud of me, proud waste a whole lot, but when you meet in that bath. <laughs> but, but that's just a story, y'all. <laughs> you don't have to take that to heart if you don't want. <laughs> but it means you have to do something when you meet a bath. It means you, you, you can pray, but you got to do something behind that prayer. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? And it said, but the Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wound and pulled oil and wine and set him on his beast, on his own beast. He put, he, he, he walked and put the man on his own, his own beast. He can pass you by an automobile, four wheel. 
You got seats in the front and seats in the back won't pick you up. I know it's danger now. I know it's danger. Now. But they know you need help. They can know you. They need help. But this this this, this Samaritan, one who was despised by, by the Jews, the Jews and Samaritan didn't have no dealing with one another. In, 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 in a, uh, according to the Jews, the Jews considered them as nobody, just as dogs. Right, right, right. Right. But this Samaritan, he had compassion on, 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 on this man that had been uh, wounded by a thief. Yeah, yeah. He docked on his wound. He taken his oil and poured his wound in, 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 in the wine and then placed him on his beast oh, yeah. and take him where he could get some more help. Take him somewhere he could be comforted. Y'all follow me? Yeah, yeah. Now, now this parable is not only for, for, for that, 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 that lawyer, but for us today. Y'all hear me? Yeah. And, uh, and he bound him up and, and brought him to an end and, and, and took care of him. He, he just leaving immediately, but he spent some time with him and taking care of the man. Tried to get him well. And on the morrow, uh, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it to the host, to the innkeeper, and said unto him, take care of him. Take care of this man. Hello, come on, Mike, help me now. Take, take, take care of this man. Amen. And where am I now? <laughs> and on the morrow when he, and on the morrow when he, uh, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave it to the host and said to him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, if you spend more than what I've given you, amen, put it on my bill. And I'll pay you when I get back. Hello, somebody. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and I, I will repay thee. Now he said, Jesus asked this, this lawyer a question. He said, now wh uh, which now of these thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. The one that had mercy on the wounded man. He, he, he was a neighbor. Uh, where I'm at, y'all. He that showed mercy uh, on him. Then said Jesus unto him, You go and do likewise. Now, I've given you illustration. I give you a parable as to as what you ought to do and what you should do. How you should take care of your fellow man. If you say you are his neighbor, then you ought to, be, you ought to act neighborly so. And take care of him. Jesus, now you go and do likewise. And, and after that, the Bible goes on to say that when it came to pass, Jesus went and entered to a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him unto a house. He had a sister by the name of Mary. And it, some theologians say, now this is the Mary that Jesus had cast out seven devils. And quite naturally, she loves him. But in this particular uh, portion of scripture, uh, after entering to their home, uh, Martha began to make preparation uh, to give him comfort, not only comfort, but to also give him uh, uh, something to eat, that he and his disciples to make preparation for them to have, uh, to dine with them. And, and, uh, and, and she found herself working by herself. And she looked and saw Mary sitting down at Jesus' feet. And she said to Jesus, Lord, do you care that Mary come and help me? He said, Martha, you, you're concerned about too many things. You, you're just concerned about, you're bothered about too many things. But Mary have, have chosen a better thing, what is more needful. You, you need to take time out and think about what is more essential to your life, to your soul. What is more essential? 
Mary, is, 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 she was at Jesus' feet. She knew that this was where she could find life everlasting at his feet. Not being crumbly and careful about many other things, doing other things that say going to help the Lord's kingdom. No, 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 no. Y'all ain't getting that. Y'all better talk back to me now. I'll let you read for yourself. A a amen. You're concerned about too many things, but what is needful, you letting it go and pass by. You don't even see what is needful, but Mary, she sees what is needed. And so she found herself at Jesus' feet. Many of you are doing a whole lot of things, you don't find yourself at Jesus' feet. You, you need to bow down at his feet. Whatever you need, you can find it at his feet. You need, you need to spend some time at Jesus' feet. Don't be concerned about a whole lot of other things, but find yourself at Jesus' feet. And if you're Jesus' feet, you'll find a blessing at Jesus' feet. Many of you are here this morning, but I wonder what your reason, what your purpose of being here. Are you here to be at Jesus' feet where you can receive a blessing at his feet? Mary was there to receive a blessing at Jesus' feet. She was there looking at Jesus as he taught his disciples about eternal life and Mary said, I want life everlasting. So I'm going to take my seat at Jesus' feet. I'll be all right at Jesus' feet. Yeah, I won't get hungry as long as I am at Jesus' feet. I won't get thirsty as long as I am at Jesus' feet. I won't get outdoors. As long as I'm at Jesus' feet. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. When I lay my burden down, I'm going where the wicked shall see from trouble and the weary shall be at rest. In order to get there, you better find yourself at Jesus' feet. At his feet, you'll find peace. <laughs> At Jesus' feet, you'll find love. At Jesus' feet, you'll find grace. At Jesus' feet, you'll find mercy. At Jesus' feet, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mary, Mary has chosen the good part. Oh, Martha. Mary has chosen the good part. I know you're concerned about many things. Yeah, that's all right. But Mary has chosen the good part. Some of these things you may be doing may be all right, but you need to take time out and make choice of the good part. Oh, glory, that life in the good part. That joy is the good part. Oh yeah. But one thing is needful. Conjunction, but one thing is needful. And Mary, I know you're concerned about all this, uh, Martha, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen the good part. Now listen at this last few words. Which shall not be taken away from her. All these other things y'all doing gonna be taken away from her. But I dare you. <laughs> Say that Jesus feet. Won't be taken away from her. The good part won't be taken away from you. Find yourself at Jesus' feet. Just go home with you. 
you, Jesus. May God bless you. Amen. May God keep you as I pray. Well, of course, ain't there maybe one.